Hello, this is Faith of Faith and Books. Uh, I thought I would do a quick life update and announcement about something I'm planning uh, for the holidays. And I'm going to do the Christmas Carol tag, which I only saw at Kate Howe's. And I'm going to link to the originator. And I also did not copy the questions correctly. So I'm gonna to have to go back and copy them again. So I don't quite have the complete <laughs> questions, um, but I'm gonna take a stab at it anyway. But anyway, I just wanna um, say that uh, we had a couple of COVID miracles happen. Um, my uh, sister who was Down syndrome, who lives in a home, uh, had tested positive. She was asymptomatic throughout. She's out of quarantine now. Um, so that was, you know, dodging a bullet. And then um, my father-in-law had come down with a cold and he had gotten tested. On Saturday, it came back positive. On Sunday, he had trouble breathing and they rushed him to the hospital. And we were very worried. It turned out he had a bacterial uh, pneumonia along with COVID. But he responded really well to the antibiotics and the remdesivir, whatever you, you know, the one that Trump took, um, that medicine, that viral, antiviral medicine. And so he came home last night. So it was kind of, last night was the first night of Hanukkah. So it was kind of a Hanukkah miracle. He got to go home. He's 89. I think he said he was 80, 87, but he's 89. So he, it looks like he beat COVID. I know that he's not out of the woods yet and that we have to keep an eye on him. Hopefully he's getting good care at his home. We have no idea how he got it. Um, and that's the scary thing. The, the retirement home where he is, they're trying to be really, really careful, but it still somehow gets in. Um, so they had a couple of people die there of it. And then they were the only ones that tested uh, positive because when they came down, they tested everybody and they were the only ones. And they have been quarantined. I mean, they really have not gone out or had any, it's, it's weird how they got it. So anyway, but that's great that, whew, um, so yeah. And the uh, announcement I want to do is I've decided to do a 12 days of Christmas and because I'm, I'm, it's a treat for the five-year-old, I'm going to give him a picture book every day of, of, for the 12 days of Christmas. So it's going to start Christmas day and it's going to end on epiphany. And, um, and I'm looking forward to that. I'm probably just going to make them really short ones that like, if I do any sort of, you know, book reviews or whatever of, of my books, uh, I'll do them separately, but I am hoping to post just a few minutes every day uh, for the 12 days of Christmas. And I just, somebody, I was looking up to see if other people had had this idea and somebody had the 12 days of Christmas, but it was the 12 days counting up to Christmas. That is not the 12 days of Christmas. Come on, people. Anyway, so let me do a Christmas Carol tag because I only have a few minutes here and I'm outside. It's actually nice that we've had like gloomy, rainy weather and we've had freezes it's been cold uh, a couple days ago. We even had snow flurries, but today it's really lovely out. It's like 52 and sunny skies and it's just really nice. Those are my chickens, if you can hear them. Anyway, the chickens are doing well. Anyway, so this is a Christmas Carol tag. Question one, The Ghost of Christmas Past, a book that was a childhood favorite. And I was, in my head, I was tying everything to Christmas, which you don't necessarily have to do with this tag, but um, one of the Christmas books that I read was the Bird's Christmas Carol. I think that's what it's called by Kate Douglas Wiggins. I had read it as a child and I loved it and then I'd forgotten about it and then I stumbled on it again like five or six years ago. Really charming, charming tale, a ch children's tale. Um, and so I've rediscovered that recently and so I'm going to say that's my childhood favorite. Uh, question two, The Ghost of Christmas Present. And then what I did was when I copied this, I didn't put the little tag she put on after the Ghost of Christmas Present. I think it was a recent favorite. I think that's what it was. Uh, name a recent favorite. And the one I'm going to say is The Small House at Allington by Anthony Trollope. So I read that not last year, but the year before last. And it's part of the Barchester series, but there's something so poignant and the character development and that book is so exquisite. Um, I just loved Lily Dale. And who was the, I can't remember the other characters. I loved Lily Dale. Um, but it's just an excellent, excellent story. Just really, really heartrending. Uh, I really, 
really enjoyed that. It was just, it gave me like one of those afterglows <laughs> after reading that book. Um, so that, I'm gonna say that as my recent favorite. Uh, question three, The Ghost of Christmas Yet to Come, a book coming out next year that you're most excited about. I don't have any, but there was a book that I read about and then had to wait to, and I, I've totally broken my a year of reading one's own. I bought myself this book on Kindle and I think, I can't remember the author's name and I should have looked it up doing this in a very rushed way, but it's called Durable Trades. And it's about, I'm really into like local and the slow economy and that sort of thing, and, you know, more rural and more community, human sized um, ways of doing things. Um, and it's called Durable Trades, and it's about trades. This guy apparently went into homesteading, and then he realized that there are certain trades that you can do that are, are family-centric that endure, that people still um, rely on or, or, or want to have available to them, you know. So, uh, so I did wait. I haven't read it yet. I'm waiting until I finish a lot of other stuff that I'm, is ongoing. But uh, that book, Durable Trades, I think it's called. Uh, maybe I'll put it in the description. Question four, Bah Humbug. And I think it was um, author, or, or books that other people liked that you didn't. I think that was the little tag. I forgot to copy it. And honestly, there's so many. Because I don't like very much, very many popular books. I mean, one thing I could say is, um, what was that one? about the dog in the night time or something it was about an autistic boy um i don't know but it, it i mean it was kind of a good story sort of it had foul language in it from beginning to end everybody seemed to speak like that uh, i just i was underwhelmed i was really underwhelmed but i can't even remember the title of it. so there's just so many i just don't like a lot of current books i just i either the language is bad or i feel like the characters are flat or it seems contrived or it seems very like politically correct driven um i don't know i i, just, I feel like they wrote better before i should try to i shouldn't be so narrow-minded i should i should try to read you know expand my horizons um and read some more current stuff and give authors a try, but life's too short, right? So question five, Bob Cratchit, an old dependable you always recommend. And I don't know if I have books, but I have authors. Like I really like Georgette Hare, if you're in the mood for a witty, fun romance. Um, uh, Agatha Christie, if you want a good mystery. Um, P.G. Woodhouse, if you want something light and frothy and funny um, so those are sort of the the authors I kind of recommend um, I like Mary Roberts Reinhardt which a lot of people don't seem to know about her but I discovered her a few years ago and I really like her uh, mysteries and novels um, so yeah so I guess it's more authors I don't think I actually recommend books all that often uh, question six, Tiny Tim. I think the little byline for this was uh, a book that you think is underappreciated. And I'm going to say the book Laurus, or L-A-U-R-U-S. I can't pronounce the author's name, some long Russian name. But uh, if you like um, Dostoevsky or those, those Russian classics, I think you'll love Laurus. It's really... Wow, it just packs a punch. Uh, I thought it was excellent. I want to reread it. And I don't ever hear anybody talking about it. Um, but I think it's a modern classic. Uh, question seven. Today, why it's Christmas Day. What's a book that always gets you in the mood for Christmas? Apart from A Christmas Carol. And definitely it's a ho The Holly and the Ivy. Or Holly and Ivy. That's what it's called. Holly and Ivy by Rumor Godden. Uh, it's like a child's book. Um, but it's just a, a beautiful story that always gets me in the mood. I just love it. Um, and then question eight, The Muppet Christmas Carol, your favorite film adaptation of a book. And I'm just going to go with my standard. Well, let me think. I was thinking about this question this morning. I, I'm going to change my answer. I was going to say To Kill a Mockingbird. 
But something that does have Christmas in it is uh, Meet Me in St. Louis or Meet Me in St. Louis with Judy Garland. That movie, I've actually read the book. The book is a, is a fun read. And they that movie really captured the kind of breezy optimism of the book and the whole, the, the how close the family was and the humor and the, the, um, it was a, it was a fun book. Um, so I enjoyed the book and I think the movie adaptation is really wonderful and it does have that wonderful, um, bit, uh, set during Christmas and, and Judy Garland singing, have yourself a merry little Christmas. So, um, so I'm going to say meet me in St. Louis is my favorite film adaptation for this particular tag. So that is it from me. Um, I'm looking forward to my um, 12 Days of Christmas. I'm, I haven't gotten any further reading. It's been such a busy week this week. I've hardly read it all. I have watched some YouTube videos, so, um, or booktube videos. Um, but this weekend, hopefully, will be a quieter weekend, and I'm just going to work on house cleaning and reading. That's what I hope to do this weekend. And um, we decided we were going to put our Christmas decorations up on the 20th when my daughter is going to visit her, her boyfriend up in Philadelphia. Hopefully she'll, she won't get COVID. And, um, and then when she gets back, because she's really good at decorating. She's got a good eye and she's, she's good at helping me. So I don't want to do it without her. So anyway, that is it from me. Happy Hanukkah. Um, Merry Christmas. Whatever. Um, I wish you well and I will talk to you later. Bye.